Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. What's popping out there? Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Oh, uh, hey, Tom Cook. What's up? Uncle Mark. One more day. Yes, I'm all freaking Saturday. But y'all know what? For some reason, I think I'm going to wind up in the shop because I got... Ooh. It's hard for me to turn that away when I... um, You know, when I can... It's hard for me to turn away extra money when I can... It's so easily to make. All right, forget that. That is not the topic. What we're talking about today, or what we're going to talk about today, or what we're going to attempt to discuss is trucks. That's right. I said it. Trucks. All right. Everybody out there that's aligned with this channel is pretty much mechanically inclined, right? In some way, you uh, you work on cars. In some way, you have a vested interest in cars. In some way, you may be, in fact, be a mechanic. I don't know. But at any rate, you uh, there's a vested interest in a truck, a vehicle such as a truck you may have. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, a couple of scenarios. Let's pick one. One of the scenarios, you just got your income tax check. It was $5,000. And guess what? That just happened to be the amount of money it takes to put down on a truck. You always wanted a truck. It's now is the perfect time to get one. The market is all right, and trucks are not that expensive. And, guys, you can get a real good, decent truck. It don't have to be new, by the way. It don't have to be brand new. Don't. It's okay. I ain't got nothing brand new. It don't have to be brand new. You can get a nice used truck, 25 or under $1,000. Okay, we're going to go over a few of them. But for some reason, uh, we have grown as a society and a public to uh, be pick and choose. Okay, we we pick and choose. We we're not sure what we want, guys. I've seen people dog out. Um, let's take the uh, Ram fifteen hundred for a minute. Tom Cook in here. Let's take the Ram fifteen hundred. There's a couple of options on the Ram fifteen hundred you can get. One's a V six, three point six Pentastar, and the other is a Hemi, which is a V eight. All right. Why is the notion that the V eight is the way to go? I mean, I know why, but I don't understand the concept of it, okay? Well, I guess I do understand. I just don't see. Let me put it this way. All right, check this out. The other day, I brought in a truck. I was dispatched a truck. All right, four-wheel drive. Of course, it's going to have a transfer case if it's four-wheel drive. It had a big old hitch on the rear, which means it pulls things. Uh, heavy-duty fan, heavy-duty this, eight-speed ZF transmission, the whole nine yard. I get it in the truck, uh, checking the light on. Guys, I put my scan tool in. I go around, pop the hood, boom, a freaking V6. So for those of you that don't don't think V6, a V6 can handle such a size vehicle, you're wrong, all right? Number one, manufacturers wouldn't make it an option. Think about what I just said. This truck is fully loaded, <laughs> four-wheel drive, and on top of that, it had not so much oversized tires, but it had it wasn't factory wheels, factory tires. It had bigger tires. All of that is being pulled and pushed by a V6 3.6 Pentastar engine. My point is, guys, you may be overdoing it with uh, your – your urge or your craving for a v8 okay yes a v8 is better from a lot of standpoint but if you sit down in the chair of a salesman and he tell you he give you both option you can only afford this option which it happens to be a v6 okay you didn't get qualified for the damn v8 i mean let's face it you ain't you ain't balling like that you ain't you ain't you know you ain't got it okay you was qualified for this one you passed this one v6 all right, salesman go. I got good news and bad news, Mr. Smith. All right, guess what? You've been approved. Oh, approved, approved. Yes, this truck right here has got a V6 pinner. Whoa, 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 whoa. V6 pinner style. I don't want it. Why you don't want it? Why, why, why? I don't want to get it. Okay, <clears throat> that pinner star engine is capable of producing the necessary needed functions that it was placed in it was put in a truck and do you think car makers gonna put that vehicle or that engine in a truck that cannot handle that no guys they don't want i mean they got to issue a warranty on that thing when it's brand new they don't want it to keep coming back making repairs on it simply because the engine is incapable of handling such a load yes 
the V8 is better. Now, the negative side of that, you, you was approved for the V6, but you want the V8, you can't get it because you ain't balling like that. All right, so what do you do? I don't want nothing then. Why? <sighs> I know why. Society has ruined our way of thinking, okay? A couple of disadvantages to getting that V8. Number one, fuel economy, all right? <laughs> I mean, you would think that's what's on everybody's mind this day and age. How much gas I'm going to pay to run this vehicle. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the only one that's broke around here, okay? Maybe y'all rich. I don't know. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. But at any rate, I'm not sure you should settle for nothing just because you can't get the V8. Same go with a Charger or a Challenger, okay? Now, I get it why people would want a Challenger with a V8 Hemi in it. I get it. I understand. It sounds better. You can make a V6 sound just, just as good. I've seen V6s do. I'm just saying. So just, just do this, man. Get what you can afford and just keep your damn hood down. How about that? Don't even raise your hood no more. Never let your hood up. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. In fact, go get you a couple of badges. Put some Hellcat badges on it. Who the freak cares? All right, that ain't that ain't nobody business what you drive. We supposed to be talking about trucks, and here I am talking about a damn Hemi versus a Pentastar. No, what's up, Renegade David Garage? Easy does it. What's popping? Look, guys, before you buy a truck, uh, these are some of the things that's gonna be running through y'all head. I'm almost certain. So we're gonna cover some um, uh, Robin Hood. What's up, man? Um, let's cover some of these things right quick. I can't freaking see Jack. All right, we finna fix that. Look, guys. Couple of things. We're gonna pick a couple of these out here. All right. What is the most reliable truck? Now, for my thinking, everybody wants something that's gonna last, right? That's where the word reliability come in at, right? Okay. Whatever I get, I just want to make sure I don't have to keep going to the damn shop. I want to assume you mean something reliable, right? All right. Let's 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 jump on this one right quick. Um, see what um they seem team to think. Which vehicle is the most reliable? Has the most reliability? Oh, guys, I demand a recount. Okay, I can't see GMC being number one. Remember, guys, we're talking about reliability. The most reliable used truck you can get. If you're in the market to go buy a used truck, guys, uh, and reliability is one of your main issues, according to this GM, the GMC Canyon, uh, the multiple online list for the most reliable used pickup truck. Uh, I don't believe that. I personally think the Ram 1500 should be at the top spot. That's just my opinion. I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. All right. The used Ram 1500 is a half-ton vehicle that's well known as one of the most reliable trucks. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear me what I just said? That's country for your dozer, y'all. That's proper and professional. I am not such. But <laughs> what I just said was the Ram 1500 is a half-ton vehicle that's well known as one of the most reliable trucks out there. You hear that, Tom Cook? Tom can vouch for that, guys. Now, I don't know why this Nissan doing in this list, but uh, it's Fluffy and him. Fluffy may can explain that, but, uh, yeah, that, I don't think that's supposed to be right here. Wait a minute. That don't look right in this category as most reliable. Uh, neither does this Ford Ranger. Uh, if any of you guys own any of this stuff and I'm bad-mouthing it, so what? <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, yes, I just disagree with this, okay? I, demand, I think the Ram should be at the top. But we're not going to uh, dwell on that. Okay. And that Ford Ranger, who's the last? Chevy Silverado. I know it's some Silverado owners in here, so I will be nice. Okay. Now, which pickup truck has the least problems? Ah, you know what? They go hand in hand, don't they? You can't ask for a reliable truck and have a lot of problems. Let me see which one has the least amount of problems. Let's look at this, guys. Oh, there we go again. Oh, Tom is cooked. You see that, Tom? Ram 1500 ain't got no damn problem. There y'all in the market for a truck. Better go get you a Ram 1500 because it was named the most improved in a J.D. Powell dependability study back in 2013. And that tradition is still going on, guys. We're in 2023 now. Remember, guys, I'm talking about used trucks. So if you're in the market for a used truck and you got about twenty dollars and $25,000, uh, been doing it uh, with a straight – Eight, six, six months. Yeah, uh, at Ram 1500. I don't even want to read the rest of them, guys. I don't even, it don't even matter, player, because they ain't up there in the top. All that matters is the number one spot. But for shits and giggles, Ford coming in at a whopping number uh, two, the F-150, 
Silverado. Look at that. Y'all beloved Toyota. Why is that so low on the Ram 1500? Everybody seemed to love Toyota. Oh, my God. Toyota and Honda. Scotty Kilmore. We just love Toyota. Well, y'all not at the top, though. I don't know what to tell you, player. I don't really know what to tell you. All right. Enough of that. Introducing the most reliable used truck in America. Not just around here. Not just in Atlanta. We talking America. The whole world, man. All right, JT, you clowning too damn much. What pickup truck has the least problem? We went over that. Or what kind of truck I can get for $2,500? All right, you get a $5,000 income tax check. That's how much you need to put down on a truck that costs $2,500. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go get you one of these. Ah, look at all these. The, year, the years are fairly low, guys. All right, 2014 F-150, $2,500 really not, or $25,000, I'm sorry, really not that much. But if you're in the market for a truck and you have this much, if I were you, I would go right here with this one right here, okay? Yes, Uh, no, no Toyota, no Chivara, uh, none of that, none of that foolishness, all right? So I'm just putting that out there. Before you go buy a truck, if this is all the amount you have, you might want to... uh. You know, choose wisely. All right. Uh, what mileage is too high for a used truck? Oh, no. Let's do this one, guys. What truck will last 300,000 miles? See, this is this is too open. This is too... It, this You can't... There's no way to predict such. But let's see what they're saying. What truck will last over 300,000 miles? Ladies and gentlemen, y'all still saying the Toyota can hit almost 300,000 miles. The Toyota's... I can't even say it. Top the chart with 296. Do y'all remember that caravan I drove in about a week, two weeks ago, had 500,000 miles on it? Okay, y'all better be glad we're talking about trucks right now because I'm sure that caravan will be in here. All right, but according to this article, the Toyota, you should be able to get 300,000 miles out of your Toyota, which falls into the category. If this was the case, why wasn't that Toyota vehicle up here in the most reliable? Since they're now claiming you can get almost 300,000 miles out of a Toyota, you know what I'm saying? Whoever wrote this article is a douchebag. That's right. I said it. All right, JT, tell them to come see me. They got some problems. Oh, uh, I don't like this part. I don't like this. We're not going to dwell on that. What mileage is too high for a used truck? Ladies and gentlemen, you're in the market for a used truck. you out shopping. You are looking at the odometer, okay? Depending on what the odometer says, will dictate if you buy the truck. So hypothetically, if this mileage number is too high for you, are you going to turn away? Let's take a look. Although there is no magic number to look for in the mileage of a pre-owned truck, you typically want to look for one with gasoline engine that has less than... Good luck with this. You're not going to find a, a good used truck with 100,000 miles or one with a diesel engine with less than two. Well, see, there's two different categories, guys. We we really focusing on the gasoline powered truck. But uh they trying to say if you're gonna do that, make sure it at least have under a hundred thousand miles. Good luck with that. That's a hundred thousand miles is like normal nowadays. Okay, so six cylinder all day long in a truck is called a Cummins. Ah, oh, that's a different ooh, that raw V. <laughs> Rob, we're not talking about uh, Cummins. We not <laughs> right, right. Okay, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, that's the according to that's the mileage, guys. You don't know, might might not want to go over hundred thousand miles if you're looking for a truck. Which truck is best for everyday use? Okay, let's take a peek. Uh, what is the best pickup truck of all times? We'll get to that last. What is the most reliable pickup truck in the last ten years? Which pickup truck has the most recall? Oh, this should be fun. Let's see, guys. We're going to do this one. Uh, who got the most damn recall? Piece of junk. Press play to listen to this article. No, I don't want to listen to the article. Ford issued the most recalls of any automakers during the 2022 year, including around... Oh, wow. So I am no fan of judging a car maker based off his recall count. In fact, I tend to think recalls are not a bad thing. <laughs> I say this all the time, so I'm consistent with my sayings. Yes, guys, we call, recalls are not a, so much of a bad thing to where y'all get a little carried away with that. But some people judge the fact that well, should they buy the car based on how many recalls were put out. 
your car maker found a problem with your car and they're willing to fix it free of charge. Technically, it's not a bad thing. We're not going to do this. Okay. What is the most economical truck? What is the highest mileage, highest mileage pickup truck? What is the easiest truck to maintain? What trucks are good on gas and reliable? This should be interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jeep Gladiator is up there with the best of them as far as easiest truck to maintain. And uh, guys, here's another thing I'm consistent with. I've always said when people ask me, what's the most reliable vehicle to Jeep make? Uh, Jeep Gladiator. And here's why. Because I never see, can freaking see it in the shop. Never. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah, I never see it in the shop, guys. Any tips I can't ask by the chance, JT. Travesta, hold on. Give me a second, man. Uh, but the Eco Diesel Ram is also in this ranking too, guys. Uh, trucks are good on gas and reliable. I don't know why Ford have the top spot, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things. We can't win them all, ladies and gentlemen. So stop looking for Dodge to win everything. How much truck can I afford based on my income? What is the cheapest truck to buy? Let's see. Take a look at this one. First gen Dodge Dakota. That's down there with the one I have that I use for scrap runs. Yes, that is fairly cheap. In fact, it was so cheap, it was given to me. My friend, Dr. P, didn't even want it no more, doll. He didn't even want it no more. He said, just come get it. I came and got it. All right, I don't like this. We went down too far, okay, in the rankings as far as, uh, you know, low price. Can trucks last 400,000 miles? Oh, man, goodness, man. Let's Let's have a little laugh at this, guys. That said, while most gas engines are intended to last at least 200,000 miles. So did y'all catch that part? Most gas engines are intended. Y'all know what the word intended mean, right? Okay, if you get over that, you did good. So I don't know why people still talk about a car makers as a piece of junk and they got 250,000 miles in their car and they still crying. It's like a girl keep whining by, niggas ain't, ain't, oh, I can't do this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 200,000 miles on average, guys. So the diesel truck that is well-maintained can potentially last close to 500,000 miles. This is such a dumb question. Can trucks last 400,000 miles? Uh, a lot of maintenance plays a role in the longevity of a vehicle. Okay, we already did what's the most reliable. At what mileage should you not buy a truck? Anything over 200,000 miles, according to that last article. What is more important, car age or the mileage? Let's take a look at this one, guys. Wow, it's a good idea to consider the age of a vehicle and the number on this odometer. However, it's more important to look at how well the owner maintained the car. A 10-year-old car with 100,000 miles may have received more tender, loving care than a 5-year-old model. With Guys, that makes sense. I never thought about that that way. Sergio, what's up, man? A V6 is a good engine, but if you are going to drive long hours every day, get a V8. According to one Mr. Uh, Sergio. Interesting. All right, let's wrap this up so I can get to the comments. Uh, what is the most stolen pickup? Oh, my goodness. Let's see who not making good security system on their vehicles. Check it out, guys. Uh, in 2020, it's the second year in a row. Oh, Ford sucks. Oh, guys, remember the name of my video? The name of this video is before you buy, a don't buy a truck until you watch this video. Now, if you just see something like this and you live in a crime riddled area, you might not want to go get a Ford. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying, dog. I'm just saying. Ford full size pickup tops the list as the most stolen car in a freaking America. How many of y'all got a Ford? Easy does it. You drive a Ford, don't you? Been doing it. What is this you saying? Been doing it with the straight eight. It's, yeah, easy drive a Ford. Easy. You been robbed before? Your, your truck been stolen before, man. Wait a minute, man. You might want to switch up and get you a Ram 1500 or something. Okay? They don't steal those that much. They don't steal those at all, guys. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the most stolen vehicle in America. Not just the world. Not just the world, Craig. America. The whole wide world. All right, guys. So if that's one of your issues, you might want to stay away from the uh, Ford. What truck has the most accident? What kind of dumb question is this? Trucks don't cause accidents. People cause accidents. Did I say that right? I ain't sure I said that right, but we're going to look at this anyway. 
The top 25 vehicles that have been involved. Okay. It's the vehicle that has been involved. Hey, guess who I don't see on the top list? Y'all know who I, don't, who I don't see? Hey, that's right. We ain't hardly in no accident. <laughs> I'm playing, guys. Around 1500, obviously, is not known for being in car accident. This is the dumbest stat I ever read in my life. What 4x4 trucks gets the best fuel mileage? Are used truck prices going down? Is it cheaper to buy a new truck versus used? This is interesting. Less expensive. Used vehicle primary benefit is that they tend to be less expensive than the new counterparts. Getting the same model you want a few years old could save you a couple thousand dollars. Lower insurance costs and fees. Many pre-owned cars carry lower insurance rates, title fees, and sales. So basically, ain't, ain't much different than a 2023 than a 2020. Is that what they're saying? The body style likely going to be the same. Only thing different is your year model. If that 2020 was ma well maintained, it should look and feel. What's up, Trina? It should look and feel the same way. How are you doing? This is my schoolmate, guys, from uh, Wapisika, Arkansas. Little small country town outside of Pine Bluff. Uh, so, yes, think about that. For, you know, you go and buy a truck, all right? Uh, is it cheaper? Yes, it's going to be cheaper than a newer one. However... Oh, uh, there's some downside to this. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. We're done with this. So before you go out and get a truck, uh, please watch this video. I'm sure I covered some more. Uh, you may, your final decision may weigh on what you saw in this video. What is the number one killer? What? What the hell is the number one killer of truck drivers? I don't want to see that. I don't want to open that because if I open that and Ram 1500 sitting at the top, I'm going to be highly pissed at the uh writer what color car gets in the most do y'all see this how dumb this sound <laughs> so they did a stat on the most trucks in the accident what color was they uh, the black truck or the green truck I always i ain't even entertaining this foolishness i'm not doing it i'm not doing it how much mileage is too much mile we did that is it better to buy a new or used car right now in 2023 guys a lot of this play a factor a lot of this your pocketbook play a major role in uh, the purchase of said vehicle. So no matter what I said, um, you uh, your pocketbook going to be the final deciding factor. All right? That's right. What's up, Tom? Uncle Mark, what's going on, man? Robin Hood 55, how are you, my friend? What is popping? 69 Dark Man in the building. What's up, David, man? How you doing, man? Um, WB. What WB? Nissan, a red Nissan or a silver? Hey man. Somebody, this must be somebody I know because I own both of these vehicles. Who is this? WB. I don't know nobody with initials WB. All right. I own a red Nissan and a silver Dakota. So somebody playing games in here. And uh tomorrow when I get to work, I'm gonna find out who the wise guy is. You can add e-talk to each of those. Oh, y'all know that? Y'all didn't know that this year. According to one, Mr. Tom Cook. Okay. You can add e torque to all of that. Uh, I have a van, the Dart and the Charger. Sister is old 300M and mom is old BT Cruiser. And she left us. Don't need any more cars. No, you don't. Uncle Mark, 26 Turbo can be a beast. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're back on that topic of uh, V6 or V8. I don't know, guys. If y'all life solely depend on owning a V8, go for it. But if not, I mean, there's pros and cons to all of this stuff. I have four vehicles in the yard for the two. Of, <laughs> you can't drive one at a time, Uncle Mark. What's going on, man? How cold is it? Is? How cold is it out there? What's up, Carlos? How you doing, man? Uh, Rob V want that six cylinder, okay? I would let the V6 truck stay on. There we go, one right here. David at Renegade's Garage. He's a hardcore B8 wannabe owner. Everybody have their preference to each his own. Oh, uh, interesting, David. David said, leave that damn V6 on there. He don't want no V6, man. Wait a minute. David wants some get up and go. Well, at least the 300, the oil pressure came back after a new filter. Oh, you talking about the, yeah, that problem you yeah, I'm glad you got that fixed, man. Okay, this guy riding around in the F-150. Shame on you, uh, easy, man. Most trucks nowadays, 10 times what I, damn. Uncle Mark, you ain't lying, man. 
If you call in a freaking wagon here a truck, that thing got a hundred thousand dollar price tag on it. I don't know what is it classified as an SUV? Cause y'all know the PT Cruiser is classified as a um, a van, ain't it? A truck or something like that. It's not a car, four door sedan car. I don't know why it's classified like that, but um, putting the oil pump on a three point six. On a Ram 15. I've never done one. I never put an oil pan on a Ram. I never had no reason to. Why are you replacing the oil pump on a 14 Ram with a what kind of car? 36 Pentastar. Any tips I can ask by chance? I haven't done one yet. I hope I never do one. But I haven't done one yet. Okay. Uh, based on the ones I've done that's not have not been a truck. Well, you can't compare those to that because the, the body will determine how easy or how hard it is. V6 is a good engine, but if you're going to drive long, y'all get that? You do a lot of long distance driving. My man Sergio suggests you stick with a V8, okay? I have no idea what that means. How, oh, hello, Trina. How are you? Trina Walker, my dear friend out in Plyon Bluff. I gave away my own. I spent more money than it's worth paying mechanics to. To keep it fixed, uh, that might be when it's time to let it go. Nothing like a straight pipe Hemi. It sounds like a V8 lover. Jeremy, all the way. Well, if we're talking trucks, many would vouch for a Ranger. Okay. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, Mr. Sergi. All right, or okay, with a five-cylinder. Wondering if it came with, <laughs> with a manual, too. Sir, have you purchased that winning lotto ticket yet? I need a bigger two bucks. No, I have not, my friend. I have not. Okay. Yes, Trina. Yeah. I don't know what that yeah mean, but yes to you, my friend. Ram is well put together, but Hemi's only. Okay. But, you know, just in case there's somebody out there that want to save on fuel. Okay. You know, they don't want to take it off from the... I saw a truck the other day. We was at the red light. The light turned green. He punched it. You can see his, his fuel gauge doing like this. Like, you, you, by the time we got to the next light, we were side by side again. So I go, what did you accomplish, player, player? What you gained? You took off before me two miles down the road at that other light. But here we are two miles later at, the, at another freaking light. What did you gain from this? We keep doing this. You're going to pull over to the gas station soon, dog. Think about what your mama say. All right. Let me stop. That's not cool. What do you do when managers come borrow your tools without permission and also don't bring it back? Depends on the manager. All right. We got a young manager, guys. Our manager just turned 31 years old. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. He earned his position. He went through the rankings. Porter, I think. I don't I think he's been service advisor, blah, 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 blah assistant manager now manager so he earned his take uh but i think he probably get a get a beat down if he did that so i don't know it depends on the guy what kind of i don't know dog i don't know what you're the boss bring my damn tool back you might get fired you might get rolled up or something you scared to ask for your tools back super up don't, don't be scared man go get your damn tools man hey what's up evelyn rodriguez yes i love toyota evelyn shame on you you're supposed to be bragging on uh, the freaking Ram 1500, Evelyn. All right, no. Oh, I see green, guys. You still could see me in my big truck, boy, smiling like a little kid when I spin the corners with my brand new toy. <laughs> What's up, man? Eric Motion in the building. Eric, do you have a truck or you going to get – you still could see me in my big truck? I have a truck, but it's a little mini truck. Guys, I was around in the days when low riders was popular, all right? My Nissan trucks equipped with a low rider with the wheels. Remember back in the day, the wheels come outside of the fender well. Bow legged. It was in style. Okay. Now the wheels are damn 22, 23. Your whole everything go up. Back then we was going out. We were wide. Okay. Wide. Not wide body like them wide fenders on the challenger. Nah, everything was sticking out like a <laughs> Yeah, that's how my truck is. Uh so I don't, yeah. I'm not a truck guy, but like I say, pretty much everybody that's mechanically inclined uh, will have a need for a truck. If it's not just to haul, just to haul stuff. 
I put my bike on my truck and took my bike to work. Now I do routes, runs on my bike while I'm at work. When I take a break, get some exercise in. Uh, interesting, Eric. Very interesting. All of the Chevy work vans had the original transmission made in around 150. The rebuilds were lucky to make 30K. Their transmission is weak. Wow. GMC. Got GMC and a Tundra guy here. Okay. Ryan. Tundra SR5. Uh, yeah, they all right. I guess they ain't no Ram 1500 or nothing like that, but they all right. They'll do. What's up, Matt Thrues? What is going on? The sequel is not even a truck. Was it in that list? What is doing on here? What is the damn Toyota sequel? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, anybody know what a freaking Toyota sequel look like? I, I don't know. Uh, according to uh, David, it's not even a damn truck. Wait a minute. So have we been misled? Okay. Have we been deceived? Toyota sequel? What the hell? I'm just not hearing of such a SC. It's an SUV? Oh, it's something like a truck. No, yeah, this is a freaking SUV. Why was this in that category? I got another one. Uh, so it's like, it's if I had to compare this to anything Dodge make, it would likely be a, a Durango or something like that. But yeah, sequel. Uh, yeah, it don't even look. It, I mean, it looked like an SUV as opposed to a truck. Interesting, probably because the Toyota isn't a heavy duty truck and I'll have time. Oh, uh, that's interesting, David. I have to go. That's what's up, David. Thanks for stopping by, man. Whatever truck that fits your particular need and is reliable. All right, we went over the reliable list. So, um, uh, that should be you would think that's everybody's goal to find some reliable. I had to work on a Wrangler with a oh, good for you, man. I ain't touching none of those, man. I get one of those, I'm crying. <laughs> Give it to the diesel guy. We got a diesel guy. Let him have that crap. You know? But anyway, Model T Ford pickup is probably the easiest truck to maintain. A Model T. Did y'all hear this? <laughs> yeah, hey, Uncle Mike saying a Model T is the easiest truck <laughs> to maintain. <laughs> Hi, <right>, Uncle Mark. <laughs> My car let down. What you drive? Investment information. That's interesting, man. The guy across the street at work at an earlier V8 Tundra. He pulled a small loaded trailer with the five. Never failed him. He finally retired it because someone hit it and he got a payoff. That is a good reason to get rid of a truck. But uh, that V8 Tundra, I hear a lot about those. Investment information, what kind of car? Oh, he's asking him what kind of car. Does anyone know if a, t a 2008 Dodge Charger instrument cluster is a plug and no a 2008 yes a 2008 yes I went to pull apart and got one uh for a few gauge issues okay God a lot of it that code is fooling people um what's the name of the code something about fuel sending unit a lot of people keep I never saw one guy put a fuel pump on a tw twice put a fuel pump on it twice uh, yeah, but if you do your load testing from the pump to the cluster and the wire is intact, your cluster is jacked up. So I had an incident like that. I had to tell it out to pull apart. Got another one. Now, you mentioned plug and play. If you plug it in, yes, it should work and you should find out that that fixed your problem. However, I would go a step further and uh, do a vehicle reconfiguration on it. To tell that cluster you now live in this car okay so whatever features that car had will likely be displayed in this cluster now you probably can get a or get around that with getting the cluster out of a car that has the same features as your car but um yeah because the cluster is a module within itself but it still needs to receive information it don't know your car have a hundred thousand miles or vice versa but um yes plug and play up to a certain point. Okay, I hope I answered that right. Cluster is a plug and play, or does it have? No, it don't have to be programmed. If your definition of program is flash update, it don't have to be flash to work. Simply plug it in. But like I said earlier, it's a good idea to do a vehicle reconfiguration on it, so everybody will know. Everybody can get acquainted. 
Hello, Mr. Cluster. I'm Bob, your next door neighbor. I don't want no crap out of you, all right? If I need some sugar, I'm coming to get some, all right? Yeah, you need to learn your neighbor. So a vehicle reconfiguration would do just that. Get everybody acquainted. You got a bigger, newer Tundra to replace it with them. It's still running, driving fine, needing some front sheet metal. Uh, that's where you come in at, ain't it, Dark? 69? Depends on the maintenance. Yes, it do depend on the maintenance. Hey, stranger, what's going on? Chef, are you going to change your name again? Wait a minute. It wasn't this the last time, was it? Um, it's Chef Blitz. Okay. What is going on? How you doing? Thanks for stopping by this lovely Thursday. Man, I bought a 1950 class of 57 and didn't know it had 1200 idle hours, but it was a fleet truck with service records. I hope it lasts. Should be fine, my guy. 2019 got a lot of the all the updates going on with it, so you should be fine. Ford, Ram, and Chevy are like three-way tie in the 803 when it comes to trucks. You can see all three at a four-way stop, but the fourth vehicle will be... <laughs> okay, Eric. Eric, was that a cut? I'm not sure what to make of that comment. All right, that was a 19... Uh, uh, here, might have been 4.6 original motor. Ford sent them a letter of recognition a few years back. Really? Interesting. Mm. 16 round 1500 with a straight pipe in me here. My friend, that's what I'm talking about. Have you had to do the, uh, I got one to do tomorrow, guys. I'm going to try to make a video. The studs broke. Exhaust studs. It's ticky, but it ain't that kind of tick. Before you get all, it ain't that type tick. All right, it's the exhaust. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people always talk about recall. You should have recalled it. Man. Man, recalls a safety issue, man. There's nothing unsafe about an exhaust leak, is it? I don't know. Drinks five seven drinks gas, but makes a ton more low end torque. Okay, how fast are you really trying to get to work? If you don't do nothing but get your ass up and go to work and come home, go to work and come home, Cora. <laughs> do you really need a hemi? I'm just saying, um, yeah, unless you like one in one of those focus groups or one of those groups that's driving groups, you know what I'm saying? I got my bicycle out there. I'm in one of them little groups that we go riding around. I kind of get tired and have to stop. I gotta give me one of add me one of the motorized things to it so it can push me along the way. But uh, yes, uh, I don't know. That's an interesting comment you made. That reminds me, I should go get my keys out of the ignition out of my GMC, which also has the key. Yeah, go get your key, Ryan. That's not cool. Philly D in the building. Dodge Ram looks the best for sure. Oh, you talking about that thumbnail picture? Yes, I just searched something. I don't forget what I did. But um, that thing is a freaking beauty. All right. So, yeah, it won't pull up. Well, anyway, guys, let's. Uh, oh, wow. I'm at the. Oh, I'm at the nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock. Let me uh, catch up some more. What up, Ryan? Um, my Rams cheaper to insure than my old WJ Grand Cherokee. Okay. Interesting. Around 10% cheaper. All right. Uh, checking in. What's up, Ale Alex the car doctor? What is going on over there in the deck? The deck. Y'all know nothing about that deck. That is Decatur. I think that's where my man is from. What's going on, Alex? Thanks for stopping by, man. You got to start doing some live streams, man. Let's see what, what's been going on during the week. That's all I do in these live streams. I try to uh, come up with an interesting topic, sit down and talk and mingle to my subscribers. Okay, you know, the ones that, that know I, I live stream. Some of them are pretty dedicated. 69, Dark Man, Uncle Mark, Tom Cook. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, but a lot of them. Okay, so yes, I like to get over and see how everybody's week going. And uh, that's exactly what we do over there. Thanks for stopping by, Alex. That's what's up, man. Hope everything going on, going well over there at the shop. All right, got to stop by one day and see my buddy, see what he up to. Uh, Johnny Heckler, that's what's up, man. Uh, so, guys, good evening, gents. Uh, yeah, everybody know Alex the car, the car doc, okay? I wanted to get uh, uh, JT, the car guy, but y'all know that other guy. He got, what's his name? The car guy. Eric, the car guy. Eric, a whole lot huger than me. I found out something about these huge channel guys. Let me tell y'all something. I'm finna get off track. Uh, you know, y'all know about the sites, some of the sites you can check to find out 
what how channels are doing. So it's not that I'm nosy. I just want to know how well my channel is doing compared to everybody else. Or and remember, guys, like I said before, I'm finna rant a little bit. Remember what I said before? All right, uh, I don't care what anybody knows mechanically on their YouTube channel. Okay, yeah, we want them to say some correct things and and say facts or state facts and do this and do that. But me, as a mechanic and a YouTuber, I judge mechanic channels based on the channel's performance. Okay, so all these big guys, Scanner, Danner, all these guy, all these huge guys. All right, I went and compared their channels with mine. Of course, they got a whole lot more subscribers than me. They've been out longer than me. But those other numbers, okay, the ones that really matter, in my opinion, no, 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 no. in my opinion, if somebody tell you money is not a factor and they got a huge YouTube channel, they freaking lying, right? This is a major factor, right? And this drives guys to either work harder or work or don't work harder. And for guys slacking, his revenue stream likely went down, so he at that point where it don't even matter. So what's the point? If a guy working even harder and harder and harder, that means the revenue stream is moving, moving, moving. So they want more. They greedy, right? Uh, that's the position I'm in. So if you're going <laughs> to – nothing against Scanner, Danner, Eric the Car Guy, none of them dudes, okay? Like I say, they got a whole lot of subscribers. They've been out longer and more people can relate to them. But in the inner portion of those – Stats, statistics, I've never been able to say that word, or it's a telling story, okay? So, yeah, uh, am, am I working harder than them? I don't know, and I, I wouldn't begin to try. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, in order to know where you at as uh, uh, whatever you're doing, you want to know, or you may need to know what everybody else doing I, that sounds nosy but it's not really nosy it's just you comparing your i don't know how to put that so i'm not i'm gonna leave it alone but my point is uh yeah jt the car guy i wanted that now i find out eric the car guy was on eric punk why you take my name well i'm still keeping jt the car guy though i don't even care now he just gonna have to we gonna have to fight over it he can't whoop me that's for sure those three six have head gasket problems over 20,000 miles? Kevin Busker. I have yet to pull a head on a 3.6 Pentastar to put head gaskets on it. In fact, I will never pull a head just to put a cylinder head gasket on a, any engine. <laughs> I don't even do head gaskets anymore. Guys, I said this before and I caught a lot of flack for this. If your car come in with head gasket symptoms, symptoms, white smoke, running rough, Blowing water out the tailpipe, uh, just all kinds of foolishness. You're not getting no estimate from me talking about you just need a head gasket. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and, and this is the part that kills me about people that read into videos. Like, you got to understand when you write up an estimate and give to a customer, ladies and gentlemen, they have the option to simply say yes or no. Yes. In between that yes and no, it's going to be some fussing. I can't believe blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, we're waiting on your answer as if, what it, if it's a yes or a no. Okay? So, I don't, people be commenting that you charge that customer such and such. So that customer, I gave them an estimate and they agreed to the estimate. I didn't make nobody do nothing. My point is, uh, Kevin, why the hell are you putting head gaskets only? Maybe I'm reading more two more into this. Okay? But um, the three said those. He's saying those three point six Pentastar have head gasket problems. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't see that as being a factor. Okay, I really don't. Y'all say what's up to my dude Alex over there in the deck. V six work too hard for toying. That's interesting. Okay, but like I say, the car maker wouldn't have put that hitch on the back of that truck, and place that Pentastar V6 engine in it if they didn't think it can handle it. Okay. Will it use ice be a plug and play? Oh, okay. You're talking about that charger? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's get Alex take on that. Okay. We pay $15 for our house, four bedroom, two bad. Oh, you're talking about the car being the price of a house. You can buy them plug and play from eBay most likely. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, for those that don't know what they what we mean, what we mean by plug and play is <laughs> simple. Yeah. You unplug the old one and you plug the new one in and you're done. Okay, we're trying to avoid needing a scan tool. So the thinking goes to buy a computer that's already ready to go. I know you can do PCMs that way. All right. So I don't know how computer places doing uh clusters. But I will say this, I have went to pull apart and literally snatch a cluster off of a charger or a challenger a 08 model and put on another car. Now, it's hard for me to say if that's all I really needed to do because I have the capability uh, to do a reconfiguration. So I did that. Would it have worked if I not have did that? We'll never know. We'll never know. All right. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Eric, 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 Alex said uh, you can buy them plug and play from eBay most likely. Yeah. So I've been having a POC DD and truck going to limp. And, oh, you need a, oh, you need a pump. Oh, my goodness. I ain't never done one on a truck, man. Oh, um, yeah. The whole big issue is getting the oil pan off. So have 436 pushing the exhaust gases and the cooling. No, it's not a common thing. You have a four. I have four 3.6. What does that mean? Hey, fix that for me, Kevin. Let me let me look into that. Let me see. I drove. I drive a 2000 F2 257.3 three. Damn. We'll probably drive it. Damn. See, that's not fair. See, Alex is a car guy, all right? So, yeah, he know the importance of maintenance and things like that to keep your car going. Uh, and now anybody can, can practice good maintenance on their vehicle, right? So, guys, there's a lot of slogans out there being put out about you take care of your car, to take care of you, this, that, and the other. Do your maintenance, it'll last longer. Okay. There are, there are freak incidents where out of nowhere, catastrophic things can happen. Yes, I see it all the time. I see customers boohooing. I feel bad for those customers that have been through the trenches with all that maintenance and something fluke, some stupid catastrophic thing just pop up. That is that's one of those just spooky things. Nobody can explain that. But um, Alex pushing has 300,000 miles on this damn 2,000 model F-250. Uh, Alex, you got to make a video and tell people your secret on how you was able to muster up that many miles out of a vehicle. Your dudes, your don'ts, your should have dids, your what you're doing currently, all of that matters. We want to know, Alex, the car doctor. All right. We're going to be looking forward to the video, man. Uh, yeah, I know where a few in Savage Yard just didn't know it had to be programmed. What is your definition of program? You talking about flash, flash update? Okay, programming is different than flash. When you're flashing a car, you're wiping out the software in it and going in with some new software. Tuning, so to speak. You're getting rid of the old tuning and putting in new. Programming is when you, I guess, programming that module to a specific vehicle. So, yeah, they basically two different things, but I don't know. My ran 1500 sitting. Oh, no, stop. Oh, what did you do to it, Evelyn? I bet you didn't change the oil. No, uh, Evelyn pretty good with her maintenance. I don't know why this uh this truck. Evelyn, what happened, man? What I mean, what happened? Oh, my goodness, I don't like that. Uh, doesn't the 7.3 engine have a lot of problems? Just whatever. Hey, he got 300,000 miles. Hey, we're looking forward to that video. Ryan, keep him on his toes about making that video because even I want to know that. Uh, 73600 is taking. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. But still, we want to know. Uh, we're going to get Alex to get a video, get us a video on that. People be having a truck just to have one, not actually use it as supposed to. Uh, just like you talk about people with 4 by 4 Yeah, man. Upside down. Yeah. People... They truck all their car, all their freaking SUV is equipped with four by four, which means you got like a ton of other parts on it that you have no idea that's even under there. Transfer case, a drive shaft going to the rear, a drive shaft going to the front, a front differential, and all that stuff, and you don't have a clue what this stuff do, or you ain't even know it was there. Just, just car just equipped with things you don't even know about. He had an 85 D50 low rider from that. <laughs> yeah, man. Mine's a Nissan. It's a 93 model too, Eric. Sweet. I'm going to have to bring it out of retirement and uh 
and fired up and see what it what is what it's working with. Eric Motion. Uh C Coyier. It's the SUV. All right. Uh built on the tundra frame. Okay, y'all talking about that. Uh it's like a full runner, but different. Uh right now. But the 6.0 does. Okay, the 6.0 is the one. Sounds like a so- <laughs> Stop, stop, uh, Evelyn. You know, the Ram has no reverse. What to do? What do you mean what to do? Man, I'm about to build a transmission no more unless you're mechanically inclined. I don't even know where my tools at to pull the pump on a, a 2000 model Ram. Uh, you just need a general tool. Look, man, the people, somebody called me one day last week with transmission problems. She said she was boohooing. She said, the shop she took it to uh, simply told her she needed a transmission. JT, I bet I don't need no transmission. You don't understand what shops, the kind of pressure shops are under now. All right. True, you may not simply need a transmission, but whatever that code dictate that problem will eventually lead to, you, uh, it, it, the owner shop owner deem it too risky to simply repair that. Guys, there are 20 to 25, 30 different things that can go wrong in your transmission that will trigger an estimate for a complete transmission. Solenoid valve stuck in low position. It may just need a solenoid valve. You take it to the shop. They wrote up an estimate. You need a transmission. A lot of shops are taking away all the risk, okay? They just soon get you a used transmission from S&W up the street with a 90-day warranty, at that point, they're only responsible for R&R. They have just become R&R, man. If anything happened to your transmission internally, they it's not on them. That is still everybody, because the public has become lawsuit prone, everybody trying to sue somebody, okay? The slightest little thing, you wind up in court because you tried to help somebody. Guys, we got, everybody here that's a mechanic, we got to get out of our feelings, man, because sometimes... It, it can hurt us. I I got in trouble trying to wait on a customer to approve some motor mount. I'm getting ready to jack her transmission in her car. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, her motor mount is clack, 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 clack. And I'm getting ready to put a new transmission in it. I said, so let me wait, see if she wants them. I waited a day. I got in trouble the next day. She think we're trying to scam her. So, but I'm in trouble because the transmission is still not done. I got caught in my feelings. <laughs> I'm a caring guy. Sue me. You know, I care. But, uh, yeah, so you got to be careful falling into that trap. Uh, hey, man, you got feelings. You might be in the wrong. Sequola. <laughs> you might be in the wrong. No, I ain't trying to say it like that, but you got to stop getting caught in your feelings, guys. That's all I'm going to say on that, man. Sequola is basically a Tundra uh, in SUV form. All right. Uh, my goal is a million miles. Damn. <laughs> okay. Alex, the car guy, plan on getting a million miles out of his vehicle. Probably do it. Uh, I've seen it. I have yet to see one of a million. 500000 is the highest I can get or the highest I've seen. Rebuild a transmission, at least open it up and see. And another thing about that, dark man, is if parts available. We can't get a torque converter for a 62 TE sometimes. So I can't build those anymore because I'm not... I can't build those anymore. Number one, we ain't got a table. Oh, man, everything's changing, man. I don't have much experience with Ford other than the three liter escape. I just heard you know, 7.3 has some issues. Not my wheelhouse of knowledge. Yeah. So my daily driver is a 7.2 GMC 2500. It's so far bulletproof. That's what's up, Ryan. Guys, I'm at the nine o'clock point. So I got to get out of Hey, before I leave, let me speak to my buddy. Uh, Dr. Art Heart Rod Rehab. Big shout outs from Western. Oh, that's what's up. I got to get out of here, guys. Uh, I started, I got started late. I got to do better with this time. I'm sorry. I'm seriously thinking about switching from forward to dot. You should. Shame on you for being over there anyway. You, know, What is wrong with you? Uh, Chef Savory Blitz, you ought to be shaming yourself. Uh, Shorts has been boosted. That, Alex. Alex. Alex, <laughs> Shorts is a major driving contributor to channels, okay? I don't know why people freaking sleeping on uh, on a Shorts. Uh, some people hate them. 
Some people love them. Why can't my computer pull up? So, um, what is that? These shorts. All right, I got to end this, but let me do this right quick. I want to see some. Uh, no, shorts. <laughs> Alex, hey, you in a shop, Alex. You should be popping out shorts on a daily. It is so easy to grab a topic off of a car and just go with it. These shorts are freaking killing it, okay? I think at one point I was uploading four a day. I done toned a little bit. That was February. Um, and that doing that, Alex, pushed me over to 120. I was already at 100 at the beginning of uh, March, uh, January. So in February, YouTube suggested I upped it up to four shorts. I don't know why. I just was hungry and greedy and said, okay, I'm going for it. Kevin Busker, what's up? Still running strong. Hey, my dude in the building. What's up, Fluffy Mexicanic? What's up, man? Fluff, man, you come on too late, man. I saw you last night. I was trying to holler at you. Uh, redoing that ish right now, realizing the OEM have stick texture on the backside. You know, oh, you're talking about, uh, all right, I'm going to make a video. That's right, Alex. We're looking forward to that. Fluff, I don't know if you met my dude Alex, man, but it's a real cool dude. We just talked him into... Uh, he was on the post. He was on the stream bragging on about on his vehicle. Like he got like, what did he say? 300,000 miles on something. I can't find the original post. So we talked him into uh, making a video explaining the pros and cons or how is that feasible. Okay. Now, everybody know maintenance is a big factor in getting a lot of miles out of your car, bro. There has to be some inner, <laughs> some inner tricks Mr. Alex is doing uh, for him to push that many miles on that vehicle. I think it was an older model vehicle too. So he just gave us his word. Everybody see that? In fact, let me screenshot this so I have it as a witness. Okay. Uh, it's F250. He's going to make a video explaining uh, uh, how he pulled that off. Alex, we're going to be waiting, my dude. That's for damn sure. All right. Uh, trying. It's been super. Yeah, man. Get on them shorts, man. Thank you, my friend. That is what's up. All right. Y'all, Yo, you cool with fluff? That's what's up. Get on those shorts, man, y'all. So, guys, I got to end this. Hey, Fluff, appreciate the donation, man. Like I say, I'll be trying to catch you, man, but you be late, man. Uh, I'm late, man. I can't. Oh, man, I'm wiped out by 9 or 10 o'clock. I'm gone. Like, I got to I just fall asleep because I ain't been getting sleep. Let's see who's been working out there. What's popping out there? All right? All right, not these haters again. Guys, I'm having so much. Oh, these haters are everywhere. I'm trying to see who's working, and they don't here posting crazy stuff. Uh, hey, uh, my buddy Tim is working over there. Tim got his own server, cranky. Uh, Ford boss man posted. Y'all know I'm subscribed to people too, man. Uh, Ford Rain Man Ray, hey, fluffy in the building, biggest ticket in 2023. I gotta go check that out. Ford boss man uploaded. I know this dude, Mike Troll, Ford boss man with Dr. Art uploaded. Ford Ranger roll bar install. Winter Rider replied, okay, this guy, he's got need some more answers. I got to get back with him. So, guys, I'm at my time limit, all right? This is my dude, BMW Doctor, guys. This is what I was telling you about, that uh, <laughs> we stealing all Scotty Kilmore's uh, thumbnails. <laughs> Ain't no shame in this game. He don't even care. All right, shit, you can do it. I can do it. I'm going to go snag me a few. All right, but that ain't cool, man. Don't steal nobody's thumbnails, guys. That ain't cool. Stop. Stop. Uh-oh, Fluffy Busy over here. What we talking about is today a good time to become a mechanic. Anybody ever had that question on their mind? Go check my man video out. Hey, this is my dude right here. Uh, this guy's garage. Okay. Uncle Mark in the building putting that work in. All right, guys, I'm just winding down now, feeling around on the books. I appreciate everybody jumping on board. Eric, I mean, Alex, thanks for stopping by. Everybody with the channel, I appreciate y'all stopping by, man. Like I say, I watch videos too. It's hard for me to... Uh, now, now my plate is really getting full trying to keep up with this stuff. But when time permits, yes, I'm there. All right, that's all I have, man. I appreciate you guys watching. I gotta go.